Hello everyone, as you know I am Paul, your eHobby guy and in today's video I am looking at a problem that I created for my drone remote controller. Here is the drone. So I recently just did two small modifications to this remote. This very simple is just a bracket for a mini iPad and everything is fine with this. The second modification was adding this long range antenna. To make this modification I had to open this and detach the old antenna from the main board. In fact, it involved detaching three cables, one of which was the power cable, the cable coming from the battery into the main motherboard. Here is my problem. This switch is in the off position and this green LED is on. It should not be on. When I push it into this position, I get into the on mode. This goes red because it's less than 100%. And there are four LEDs indicating quickly here 25, 50, 75 and 100 percent of charge. So when I plug the charger in these all light up over time and when it's fully charged this turns from red to green and when it's fully charged I turn it to the off position that should go off and it is not going off. This is staying on and it's slowly draining down the battery. Something went wrong when I opened it up and I was unplugging a cable from the motherboard. I did some damage I'll explain exactly what I did, but we're going to try and figure out together if there's some way that I can get this fixed because as of right now, I'm going to be in a grounded condition because it is not accepting a charge at all. So I plugged this in for a couple of days. It did absolutely nothing and the battery is slowly draining down. I had just less than 50% a few days ago. Now I'm down to 25% and this LED is continuously on. Let's see if we can figure out a fix for this and let's jump right in. get this open there are four screws in the back that I have to take out along with two nuts and bolts that hold the antenna assembly onto the main housing. So they were pretty quick and easy to remove. Then I just pulled it apart making sure to start from the base because the antenna bracket holds the top of it together so you have to pull it apart at the bottom and then pull out the top half from the antenna bracket. Now I had already taken this apart and you can see at the bottom here there are three cables that plug into the main motherboard. I'll show you where they plug in. Right here. Here and here. Now the LEDs are on the other side of this motherboard and so my mission is to just remove this motherboard and get to the other side to look at the LED and see what I can do to fix it or see if there's any damage see if there's anything I can do. And so there's one screw easy to get to right here, another screw that's easy to get to right here, a third screw that's easy to get to right here. But I ran into a problem. The board still is not moving and so I'm suspecting there is a fourth screw somewhere under here under this module. And so I'm going to have to see if I can get it off. With some effort I did manage to get this off. There's a double row of uh, header pins there but it was held together with this thick foam and I had to pull pretty hard to tear that foam that was a spacer for that board onto the motherboard. That allowed me to get to the fourth screw and I was able to remove it. I was then able to just lift the motherboard up and out exposing all of the LEDs and that on off switch right there. Jumping over to the bottom half of the housing that black cylinder right there is the battery. It's an 18650 battery. I featured it in other videos. We've actually did a video that was co very comprehensive on safe charge and discharge of these batteries. I'll put a link in the description down below. But right now I'm detaching the power connector to see if I can figure out if we're still passing a charge from this connector to the battery because it's not accepting a charge when I do plug it in. I do want to talk for a second about exactly what caused this problem to begin with. The wires that come directly from the battery connect directly into the motherboard and this connector was very tight. I was trying to get under the plastic connector and pull my nails but I inadvertently pulled the wires out of the connector itself. But I was lucky in the sense that the metal connector portion of the connector 
just pulled out of the plastic portion of the connector and so I was able to push the metal back into the plastic portion and make the connection. This worked out well except for one thing. When I pushed the wires back into the plastic part of the connector, I didn't get the polarity right and so I plugged it into the motherboard with the wrong polarity. And it's difficult to see here but there is a metal portion of the connector still not fully pushed into this plastic part. The polarity is right now because I realized where I had made my mistake but the damage was done. With that said, I made sure that I fully inserted the metal portion of the connector into the plastic portion of the connector so that when I plug it into the motherboard, it seats properly. Getting back to the first of the two problems I have, which is the charging of the battery, the motherboard is not providing this function anymore. I'm going to introduce this module again, which I featured in another video on batteries. And I do have a playlist on batteries if you want to check that out. But this module is a TP4056 and it's designed specifically to charge these 18650 lithium ion batteries. The really good thing about this module is that it protects from overcharging the lithium ion batteries. Lithium ion batteries typically require protection from being overcharged and from being over discharged. This module protects for one of those two things, which is the overcharging. What I'm going to do is just cut the leads off the battery and I'm going to plug this directly into the battery and nothing else. And I want to see if that battery is still something we can use. So here you can see the battery is connected thing to nothing else except this charging module which is a TP4056 charging module. So I'm going to fully charge this battery and then we'll take a look at the behavior of the controller with a fully charged battery and then see how we can make that green light behave the way it's supposed to. I just want to point out one thing here on this charging module. When this is charging we have this red LED on. Let me just see if I can get a yeah, turn a light on so it's, it's more evident here. But this changes to blue a blue LED which is right next to it when it's fully charged. I'm just thinking ahead and thinking that maybe that blue LED we can take that signal and make that green LED on the controller somehow integrate that and make the green LED come on instead of that blue LED if we do end up using this charging module to fix the controller. We'll take a look after it's fully charged but I just wanted to think out loud for a second right on camera. Okay, this is what it looks like fully charged. The red LED went out and the blue LED came on. I hooked the battery up back to where it should be. I plugged everything else in. The only thing that's disconnected, of course, is the battery charger, which is working through this board somehow. Of course, I still have the green LED problem because I haven't done anything to resolve that. But what I wanted to know was the reaction here or the indicator of the amount of charge that's in the battery uh, when I do switch it into the on position. So let's just do that. I'll switch it on. So yes, the battery does have a full charge and I do have all four LEDs on. I can use this module to charge the battery and I get an indication of the amount of charge here after I switch off from being charged with this. The only problem remaining right now is in the off position and you need this green LED to be turned off. Before we look into the green LED problem, I do want to see if I can use this board purely as an interface for the micro USB power cord because this does have the two mounting holes which is custom made to mount into the housing over here. And so I think I'll just disconnect this, cut it in half and put the meter on the red and the black wires to see if I'm passing the 5 volts still through this board because I'm not sure if there's a problem there. It looks like there's a couple of diodes here. So I want to see if this is still intact properly. And if it is, I can use this and wire it directly to my module as a means of charging the battery. Okay, here's the red and the black wire stripped. It's actually kind of a brown, but we do know that power goes through the two outer cables, data through the two inner cables, red being positive, and in this case, brown being negative. So I'm going to put 5 volt charge on this micro USB, and then we'll check to see if it's got power. It's slightly off screen here, but I am getting 5 volts passed through the board, so that's excellent news. These two wires I can hook up directly. I can just solder the positive on here. You, I don't know if you can see it, but it says in positive here, in negative. So I could solder these two wires, plus and minus, right onto this board, off of this board, 
and just uh, maybe glue it to the inside of the housing to use it as the charging module. That's what I'm going to do. Now that I've resolved that we can use the micro USB instead of the mini USB, now let's take a look at that constant green LED issue. Zoomed in a little, you can just see the three legs of, the, of this bicolor LED here. I'm going to take a guess and guess that the center is positive, it's the anode. So let's just test the left, yes, so the left leg, with the center being a common anode, the left leg is the red LED. Since the center is negative, I'll keep my red lead on that and switch the other, and I'm not getting anything on that leg. And so I'm suspecting that this leg is the green LED. It's strange that my meter is not making a come on. I'm suspecting that if I cut this leg, that we won't get any green light out of this at all. There's obviously a malfunction in the circuitry of this board. I think I'm going to just go ahead and cut this green leg. And I think it would be more fun if I did it live. What do you think? Okay, so let's try and hook some power back up to this again. There we go. This does look like there's some green and red coming on. I am fully charged still. This right hand leg, if my assumptions are correct, is going to be the green LED. And if I cut it, I will never have a green LED on this. However, my charge status will come from the LEDs on my charging board, my charging module. And so I don't need an LED if I use the LEDs that are on this. So let's go ahead and let's try and... See if I can cut the green leg, the right hand leg of this LED. I'm going to try to be very careful. See if I can separate this. Yes, you can definitely see it went more red. So I think I've cut the green light out. In fact, I'm pretty sure that I did. I've got the center and the left leg, which is the anode and the red leg of the bicolor LED. And so the real big test is, did I fix my problem? If I switch this to the off position, am I going to get nothing here, which is what I want? Because if it was on, it would be a constant drain. A very slow drain nonetheless, but a constant drain that I just don't want. So here we go. Yay, that's exactly what I wanted. So here's what I have to do. I'm going to separate this leg just by bending it. I do need its position to remain consistent because it has to come back out through. But I'll no longer be depending on the color of this to go green for the status of the charge of the battery. And so I can use the, the LEDs on this to indicate the battery charge and these LEDs to indicate discharge. Right now it looks like we have a 100% solution. Let's just see if we can go and make that happen. So next, let's take a look at the LEDs that are surface mounted on this so that I can remove them and replace them with LEDs that I can mount on the housing so that I can see the charge status of the battery. By the way, just as a side note, this is a second TP4056. I inadvertently touched the output wires together on this and I fried it. So this one is not working anymore. I don't want to leave any of this stuff out. It is important. We have accidents. We just have to be careful to minimize as many as we possibly can. So I just figured I'd include that. Okay, let's test these two diodes. I'm going to test the right hand one first. Okay, I'm getting the red one lit here. So the anode is closest to this edge. Let's move over to the next one. I'm getting the blue LED here. Again, my red probe is on here. So this is the anode closest to the edge. The two anodes are here and the cathodes are here. So I'm going to do a continuity test. See if it's common anode or common cathode. Yes, so the anodes are in common and the cathodes are not. So this is a common anode. I'm going to remove these LEDs and replace them with my own 3mm LEDs so that I can mount the LEDs onto the housing, indicating to me when it is charging and when the charging is complete. Here are my two 3mm LEDs. I tied the two anodes together and the two cathodes are here, ready to be soldered onto my board. I'll just put some heat shrink tubing to protect these. Here they are with some heat shrink tubing. Obviously I left uh, some uncovered here so that I could separate them a little to mount into the upper half of the housing so that I could see them. Another thing that I do want to mention was the length of these. I cut them about 8-10 inches long so that if I do have to take it apart again, these will be mounted on the upper half. And these ends will be connected to the lower half where the battery is. So right now 
uh, let me turn this off I did solder these two LEDs right onto the board which is right here and I tied it into the battery and so we are going through a charge it should not take long but what I want to see just to be sure before I solder all this together is that we switch from red to green when we hit a full charge through this 4056 module so I'm going to leave this we'll come back when it is charged here it is fully charged we switch from red to green this is exactly what I need I now have to drill two three millimeter holes in the top side of the housing I could just drill above these adjacent to them and know that those two LEDs are the ones that are used for the charge of the battery that's what I think I'll do Here are the two LEDs ready to be placed into the housing, just bending it over a little bit here. And then of course, as usual, just covering them over with a generous amount of hot glue. Now we can get the motherboard back into place, screwing all four screws back on. Here's that upper module, just push that pins in place and pressing it firmly down. So here's the original plug into the main motherboard with the wires extended. I'm just going to protect these with some electrical tape and then I'll be able to join all reds and all blacks together. All the wiring is now connected to where it should be. We just need to plug in everything where it needs and reassemble the entire assembly. Starting here with the micro USB board, getting these two screws back. Now I can plug in the two plugs, of course the third one we're not using, which was going to this old charger board. That's being bypassed now we're using this, so this is not getting used. We're going to plug in the power. That went in nicely. And this is the plug coming down from the camera rolling dial. So now we are ready to reattach the antennas. That's the three antennas attached. Now I'm just taking a few seconds to tape everything up. Now all of this wiring is protected. We can just put the cover back on. That leaves the antenna clamp with two nuts and two bolts. This is going to clamp the antenna right here. We have the on off switch cover. So we can still see I'm holding a full charge. Red light is on. We plug in some power. We should get I, I did use some power, so we should get a red light, and yes, we did. So here's my red light, my battery charger. Let's turn it off. Might be a little clearer. And of course, when we get the full charge, that goes to green. So I should be fully operational. Let's give it a test. We're not grounded anymore. Disaster was averted. I was able to save my drone controller. By the way, the drone was a DJI Phantom 3 standard. The drone has a special feature that when the controller battery level gets very low, it has a return to home feature. And that feature still works. And so I was very happy about that. I do have to say I did get one message, uh, a warning message that said, battery was disconnected but i know exactly why that was because of the modification that i made so i am still fully functional airborne and i have full functionality of my my drone and the controller you can see how a little knowledge of electronics can go a long way in everyday life which is why i encourage you to watch this channel and other channels i hope you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up down below if you did click my picture in the circle to subscribe to this channel right now follow me on social media and i hope to see you next time